Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're going to talk about Apple's efficiency. So let's dive deep into it. Now we are talking about here M1 chip. Now it does not matter what happened afterwards that because that was the key moment, inflection point as you will. Now Apple shook the industry. Now what Apple figured it out is basically what will happen if a mobile SOC grew up meaning instead of being tightly limited by the power constraint and thermal constraint and physics constraint as in like the how much volume constraint you have you let it space you let it like hey how about you grow up and you have laptop battery and laptop heat sink that's the most critical aspect can you dump heat on such much larger area and you have space so you can put more chips there uh, what can you do the outcome would be a laptop that has a battery life equivalent to a smartphone, not a laptop. So instead of running for a few hours, you're going to run for much, much, much longer, maybe even one or two days of light use. So that's awesome. And then you add Apple special sauce, special sauce being hardware support for video codecs, specifically ProRes. Why is that? Apple is the one made the ProRes and ProRes is very important in pro industry. There's the ProRes. Unless you are using with Ari cameras or RED camera, they have their own proprietary formats. Uh, but generally, most people try to use ProRes. It's a, it's a good format. At that point in time, uh, it, this puppy, even though it's a very underpowered system, it will be able to handle profile, pro stuff. So people can do video editing on very lightweight machine, much better than any uh, Windows system. And it can be used for work. So people can do a lot of things, a lot of things. So that's the M1 chip, this puppy. Now, for whom this puppy was made? Well, uh, Apple figured out one thing very interesting, that people who are in Apple ecosystem, they're going to buy products that are from Apple ecosystem. So that part is sought. Now, because they can do deal with ProRes, it literally allowed them to create a perception. Now, this is one thing you have to understand. Many companies are far more valuable than Apple, but none of them have the currency, the moolah uh, of Apple simply because of public perception. Stock market runs on public perception and uh, Apple is really great at it. The ProRes part, while it is awesome, but if you really try to use it, uh, the laptop will be like, bro, what are you actually trying? Like I, I say I can do it does not mean I can actually do it. What does that mean? That simply means that if you really try to have multiple files, uh, it will hit the RAM limit. RAMs are very limited on these puppies, M1 chips, very limited, like, <laughs> whoa, kind of limited. And not to mention the SSD used, those are also very low grade, as in how low grade uh, my computer has PCI 4.0 high quality NVMe SSD, uh, that is 990 Pro. So how fast this puppy can go? Uh, this puppy can give you at worst case scenario, as in like full saturation, all the cache has been overwhelmed, all the 90% uh, uh, SSD is full, then it's going to give you one Gbps continuous continuous. Now, uh, what about like normal scenario? Normally, it can easily give you 6 Gbps. So very, very powerful puppy. Uh, what about Apple? Apple at best case scenario, you are talking about 1500 Mbps and uh, it's going to drop down as, as it fills up. It's common thing with flash. So how the heck you were supposed to basically run an operating system, dump gigabytes of ProRes file. ProRes files are heavy files. So dump that, dump all of that into DaVinci Resolve and try to edit that. Can you do that? Absolutely, you can do that. And dedicated hardware chip does make it far more easier. But do not expect to like a pro end experience here. And the moment your file sizes actually start to grow, that point you will hit a bottleneck where it's like, hmm, it's not really a pro machine. And that's why it does make sense. Apple does have a lineup of pro hardwares for that reason. So what Apple truly figured out is that 80% of humanity, meaning you just go out random places, put hands on 100 people, and how many people would be like people that are can be classified as uh, tech wizard, meaning they know computer, as in like, oh, this is a computer, this is a CPU, this is a RAM, this is how it works, this is motherboard, this is the chipset, like stuff, like they're aware of things. At best case scenario, 20%, meaning 80% of people are not tech wizard, which is scary to me simply because humanity is becoming more and more dependent on computer and somehow we are becoming less and less aware of the goddamn thing that runs our life. That is scary to me, but it is what it is. On top of that, 90% of people who are actually working on laptops and all that jazz, they can be taken care of by these puppies, basically mobile SOCs. And I'm talking going few years back, like uh, my first computer, uh, like Core 2 Duo, uh, has like less specs than my current uh, mid-range smartphone like by a lot and you might be like then why can't i just use my mobile phone simply because google is smoking some low quality weed and nobody has found the hey just write a ui layer that makes everything into a proper desktop system 
trust me like it is it will be mind boggling and samsung is trying that but unless google supports it it's not gonna fly samsung does have de desk system and you would be shocked how much things you can do just add a keyboard and mouse and you're like damn the amount of things and the amount of people it can cover just by that is mind boggling and apple truly figured it out it's like yeah people say that we they, we want this we want need this. it's like no no, if I just take a mobile SoC, make it bigger, give it more capacity to endure heat, give it more cap RAM, uh, it's going to be more than fine enough. So that's what they did. More than real. Then who needs this compute power? If 90% of people don't need this, who needs this? Basically, the people who classify as backend, meaning like me, I used to be like this uh, when I was working in gaming studio. We had Max or I think this is Maya, uh, but basically Maya working there. Oh, no, no, this is Max. ViewCube is there. Max working there. We did not have RGB keyboard. We were working there. Basically, people who are working, like they are actually doing the code, actually doing the code compile, they will never touch M1. They're like, because they're going to oversaturate it very quickly. And the people who are just like, as the Linus Tech Twist will call, glorified Chromebooks. Cafe people, cafe people. Those people will just use that. So, unless you are in the back end, unless you are working on ZFS systems, unless you know what you are doing on a very high level, you don't truly need horsepower. Even most people who are aware also, they can be very well satisfied with this puppy if somebody figures out how to make a UI layer that makes this like a desktop. So, that's, that's the true genius of Apple basically, not the fact that they made M1 chip, that's awesome. But truly awesome is like, huh, people actually want many things but they don't need many things. So this is the most amazing part they figured it out. It's for people who are in Apple ecosystem and majority of people don't need more horsepower than a SOC that provides. And people who are in the back end who truly need high horsepower, they're gonna buy the quote unquote pro branded or most likely some other system other than Apple. So they technically covered whole of humanity with just one product, one SOC so to say. So what about the workhorse part? Like uh, I literally recently built my new system and too many people have commented, it's like, why did not you buy Apple? Why did you not buy? It's like, first, I will die before I buy Apple. Uh, second, you have to understand, when you buy a workstation, workstations are designed to be overpowered and they're inefficient consequence of that. But the reason for that overpoweredness is that if something new comes along, because again, these systems would be in use for years, if something new comes along, you should not be like, lol, I'm stuck. That should not happen. That's the whole point of it. So anything that A6 can't handle, uh, M1 will be like, poof, for example, right now there is a new video codex that is the most important video codex right now. Why? Because it's going to be used by YouTube. That alone makes it important. It's going to be used by every other streaming site that you can name directly. Be it Amazon, be it Twitch, be it uh, Netflix, uh, be it other brands also. Everybody is switching to AV1 codex. It does not have the hardware for it. Even though it's open source, they don't have the hardware for it. That means try to do encoding or anything on AV1. At that point in time, the general course, that high power draw general course will become something very valuable because while yeah it will consume more power but it can at least do it the moment you put uh, something like a s6 there it's like either i can or i cannot touch it computers are like if i have a6 for it awesome if i don't have it i will still crunch this it will be slow it will be sluggish but you will not be stuck that's the core aspect here and if you go into gaming studio given the fact that i have actual experience with there you are more likely to find linux system it's like why well, uh, many times we, once we build the game, we do what we call crunching it, compiling it. That puppy is boring, it takes time. So generally we have a server or a very high end workstation, like high end, as in like the motherboards have dual socket CPUs. So some big puppies crunching some big data. Now that takes time. Like sometimes it could take one day or two days or maybe even more than that to crunch all that data. So people generally run Linux there. It's like just run Linux on x86 hardware, just crunch this puppy. Not testing and all that. Like most time they will of course use Windows for that obviously, but Linux is, and more and more people are using Linux simply because of Steam Deck, that's Linux also. So. You, you are more likely to, if you are randomly throw darts on AAA Gaming Studio, I'm not talking about Moil Studio, AAA Gaming Studios, you're more likely to find, well, absolutely guaranteed to find Windows and more likely to find Linux than Apple. So don't even think there. Like gaming, no. Then we come to the Windows part. Now, I did not knew this. This was my own uh, blind spot, so to say. I never thought that Windows was robust enough that it can be used for industry. Turns out it was, and it is, and it is still being used. I did not even knew this. Like, for example, I have linked a video down below. F1 from 1990s car. They are like, how uh, much horsepower, like how much hassle it is to start a basically F1 car. They had Windows 95 laptop. I was like, why? That's 30 years. The video is very recent. So why you have like, you know, 30 year laptop and they're like, yeah, modern lap modern equipments are so fast that it will confuse the, basically it will error out the software they have and the software only works in Windows 95 and they have this whole giant 
tough book so to say from panasonic and still working and turns out this is not a rare case turns out it's common in uh, basically automotive industry and manufacturing industry there are many manufacturing industry literally running on windows 95 boxes and some on windows xp not even making it up so when you really need your work done windows is your thing then we come to arm what if you need something some specific reason that you need arm you like apple because apple may no nobody buys apple hardware for arm high level work what they will do if let's say they are amazon they will build their own silicon if you are talking about like somewhere outside is like hey i cannot build my own silicon what do i do i need arm architecture they are like go to this puppy ampere company now this company is very young this is from 2017 but they are printing money right now and anybody who's like i need arm architecture they are like shut up i got this and how powerful these are they can easily give you 100 cores 200 cores or like some ludicrous number very easily right now and they know many people also need this for desktop development they are like bro they built a desktop so if you really need high level capacity and doing some heavy crunching this is your guy not apple think about it like apple can make socs but why the heck they are not building their own socs for their own servers icloud is a server system i can guarantee you either it has this puppy or it has uh, basically x86 architecture why the heck they not build their own silicon they can't like when you really need horsepower that time is the where apple starts to fall apart it's really great for like you know specific things awesome for that the moment you like do everything they're like yeah no that's why ampere is so successful nowadays and again when you are talking about hyper clusters when you are talking about super computers 99% of the time you will still find x86 there so is there is there and then we come to the fact that uh, apple uh, basically apple's marriages rarely last for example they were married to ibm using power pc and uh, they divorced that puppy and consequence was the people who were relying on apple hardware for 10 years they literally got eat come to uh, come to new system now again from users point of view it was not too painful from developers point of view is like bro i'm never running anything system critical on this because they did not upgrade it they jumped they went from a uh, risk architecture to sys architecture complicated and sys net architecture so they jumped to intel and uh, people started working on intel okay then over time they that marriage also fall apart the intel and apple marriage fall apart and then they jumped again this time they're like no nobody can keep us happy so we gonna build our own stuff so they built m1 chips so they ditched intel right now many developers are still struggling because of this fact that uh, you know users will not feel the pain but developers will feel the pain that you are just eating it and you are saying oh we have the rosetta layer none of those things work the way you think and not to mention rosetta layer itself is a software package that means somebody has to work their ass off to make sure that it works and then we come to another aspect is like compute card uh, their marriage with nvidia also broke apart so apple and nvidia they don't get along so good luck so if you are in a scenario where you need uh, like chat gpt on that you cannot even use apple hardware if you really wanted to simply because the fact that they have divorced from in, uh, intel nvidia and ibm so no nvidia specific tools and is it necessary to have nvidia specific tools nowadays yes especially for ai work It's so like it's very important. Like this puppy, A one hundred is. This is the reason why we have Chat GPT. So it's not exact model, but you get the point. Like Nvidia is directly responsible for uh, development of Chat GPT. They were the one that provided the hardware that trained the Chat GPT neural networks. So nobody ever mistakes Apple for a workhorse. I find it quite shocking that so many people assume that it is a workhorse machine. Nobody ever uses. Like think about this. Like a company that is made in two thousand seventeen is now selling so much. Nobody buys Apple. like apple is a good looking thing it's not a horsepower thing then we come to the x86 the architecture that people are almost forgot because everything is about arm nowadays while well, it is making a comeback why because there was competition we had amd and intel but amd was getting bit slapped and i unfortunately bought the bit slapped variant that was fx8350 the bulldozer line really not good but here's the that not good system lasted me from 2013 to now like i just recently upgraded my system so it was not amazing but it was not bad then we come to the amd's risk they because they were so uh, in such a horrible position they took a risk on chiplet design and that puppy paid out that puppy paid up that was like bro i got this fam so they paid up so well that right now you can buy cpu and gpu with in one die like one puppy with low power draw like really low power draw how low power draw that you can run this on a portable device more portable than a laptop let that sink in to give you a compute power perspective this puppy basically steam deck it has same power level as ps4 playstation 4 level uh, compute power in terms of teraflops now 
that's old variation that's older news now amd ryzen z1 series uh, this puppy basically 7040u series is going to come out very soon and the first device which z series will uh, is this basically rog ally asus rog ally now this puppy has z1 chip now this is two times more powerful than basically steam deck while consuming the same amount of power it happened past tense it already happened like it's already in the pub people's hand not common public hand it's like a testing review early phase so to say but it should uh, come online very soon and maybe by the time you are watching this video this uh, the price of this would be online people would be starting pre-ordering so that much power running on battery let that sink in it's running on battery is it has less battery capacity than many laptops so we reached that point and this puppy can do gaming at 120 fps let that sink in gaming is energy intensive this puppy can do 120 fps so flat out amd literally made x86 cool how cool uh, my uh, series my cpu basically uh, does not have the x series i specifically bought non x series why because it does not even spin up the fan to very loud levels it's like bro me cool bro and i'm talking about included box cooler it does not heat up very energy efficient and these puppy that will be for laptop series the next generation laptop like the highest power is 7080 um, basically 7840u series uh, that puppy has 8 core and 16 thread and that has tdp of 15 to 30 watts now all of these are 15 to 30 watts meaning if you want to really thin maybe even a tablet you uh, go with a basically lower clocking variant or if you want like really bonkers to the walls performance for a low power device you can go to 7840 all of them have more or less same TDP, but uh, cores are different. So x86 is now reaching a point where they're like energy efficient, meaning my CPUs barely heat up, barely. The TDP is barely rated more than like 95 watts. And not to mention the lower variant that is like six cores to four cores, their TDP is 65 watts, meaning we are going uh, back from like the era of basically computer consuming more, more, more power to less and less and less power. So x86 is back. It's not going anywhere. It's not like oh, M1 will give you battery life of like 12 hours and uh, X86 will give you power of like, you know, two hours. That's not true anymore. And again, it not really ever was. It's like a, if you compare a thin light to thin light, which again, many companies have done and many YouTubers have done, it's like half, like you get half the battery life. Not it's like, oh, uh, Apple will work for 12 hours. My system will only work for two hours. No, nah. no, nah. it's half, six hours. You will get six hours. Same test, running same test on both devices. So what we can expect in the future? Well, my personal favorite expectation is that Framework and AMD, they will get married and they'll make a baby. Now, why we want AMD and Framework to make a baby? Because if they really do this, we're gonna have a lasting and powerful hardware. Now, Apple hardware back in the days were really robust. It was really good, no discussions about it. And because they were selling so much and they had so few models, it was actually replaceable, as in repairable, as in you can actually make this puppy last simply because everyone who threw away a lap Apple laptop, people just collected it, harvested part from it and repaired the old one. It things kept lasting. It was a very good ecosystem where you had Apple, that means you had a system that you can count on for e years. Basically, anybody who bought in now early 2000s, I think like 2005 kind of era, uh, they could have literally bought from 2005 to 2010 kind of era and they were like, bro, I got this. It was awesome. It was like, you know, uh, the golden period of Apple laptops. But right now what they have is thin weights, what we call basically good luck. You buy this, good luck, hope it lasts. Not only it, uh, many of them have like weird flaws, which somehow Apple QC misses and they are fragile. Like there are so fragile they are getting in lawsuits and they are losing. Let that sink in. A two trillion dollar company is going to a court and losing. That's how bad it is. Like modern Apple laptops. Again, the Apple's uh, image is still there. The, uh, the oh Apple lasts. That image will take time. I think around ten years from now that people are like, no, Apple no longer lasts. Even though it has happening today, but it takes time to uh, change the image. So that's why I want framework and AMD to make a laptop where they're like, this puppy is gonna last and it's gonna last for long. And maybe you can even upgrade it when you get uh, you want more hospital. Now, I am a simple individual who is like, I will never buy Apple no matter what. Now, the reason for that is Apple is a bad company. Flat out. Like flat out. Now, all other companies are bad. Absolutely. The only difference is other companies are like, I'm going to take 100 rupees of your money. I'm going to give you 10. 10's worth, basically, so to say. Uh, Apple is like, I'm going to take 100. Go away. Oh, shoo, shoo. And at this point in time, most of the time, I'm like genuinely shocked. Do they have, are they actually doing anything new? Most of the time, it's like uh, they are resting on their laurels. It's like yeah, we, we did something awesome. We built an ecosystem. It was the. It's like what have you added recently that is like genuinely good? Nothing. 
and here's the deal it's not like apple modern uh, apples are because again even apple fans are like yeah modern apples are not as uh, awesome as it used to be so what is happening is apple was always this bad but they always had an issue like make sure you do not go poof under warranty meaning if you have heard of the individual cashy nastat uh, the individual became very popular because he was the first person to expose the fact that ipods the first successful apple device had a pre bug built into it meaning the moment you bought it you activated it after 18 month it's going to poof the battery poof the battery as in like uh, damage the battery in such a way that it will no longer hold charge so literally at the dot at before the calendar 18 month it will be like dude it's it's a good device of course it will not have the battery life of the like you know 18 month ago but it was good it was useful it was like bro i, I can last the moment that happened is like poof that was their first device that was successful apple was always a bad company just it figured out how, a way to piss on the customer and customer still buying it so that's why i personally hate apple that was their first devices they were the companies like brick by brick look at their laptops like dude why don't you allow somebody to use your own hardware like apple to apple hardware swaps It's like no 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 security is like dude that's not how security works if i change the power supply of my computer my security won't be compromised if i swap ram my security will not be compromised unless i literally eat the ssd it won't be compromised and not to mention ssd also created an issue because here's the what is invaluable in a laptop if you are like high end person like valuable person what is most important part in your laptop is the goddamn memory nothing else matter you can just eat your laptop as long as you can keep the data intact now you like okay let's back up everything no you can't first flat out you can't because again you can easily have 500 gb try uploading 500 gb on 5g it's not that fast the moment you start to actually upload it the moment clock starts to go it's like yeah first few minutes the speed will be high then network will be like hey bro is actually downloading something or uploading they will clock your speed down so good luck that you can't do and not to mention where will you find data packs where you can upload that much data and online storage so fundamentally you have to rely on these puppy and if you are a good individual you will be like every night i do a backup but what happens something in between so apple old system was like you had a laptop you had nvme like normal sane human and then they are like ha huh, customers are upgrading this puppy <sighs> this is not good thing we ha we have to piss on their uh, face you know so they yeeted it soldered ssds then they are like uh, uh, sir lot of music producers actually use there and his deal songs is very precious Th those things are very precious it's like that uh, spark on the moment so you record your laptop that's awesome apple is has that sort of reputation and that sort of reliability people use it awesome but what happens if something bad happens let's say a laptop breaks uh, it falls down things happen it's a real world things happen then they're like okay okay we soldered the ssd so we'll give you a data port that you can uh, go to a genius bar and extract the data if your laptop is compromised awesome good move again ideally you will have a basically completely independent system but this is a good compromise then they were like okay 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 we have to piss on people so they removed this port in modern variant it's soldered you cannot do anything to recover the data apple that's why i said like they knew they knew for a fact that when they were soldering basically ssd chips on ram that data is the most important part of your laptop data must be recoverable they are like ah, what if we piss on the people and just say that you are a poor person you do not have a enterprise grade server enterprise grade cloud networking and satellite upload where you can just upload hundreds of gigabyte per day it's like we can piss on the people so that's why I, from bottom of my heart i personally hate everybody who uses iphone apples and like support apple so like fundamentally and because they are so successful every other company who were doing good thing they were like hey instead of giving 10 rupees uh, you know value back like you know take 100 give 10 back what if we give only 2 back hey apple is pissing on them it's like they are still working it's like they keep doing it so flat out giving them money flat out again this was apple apple was reliable let me be very clear apple was reliable apple was stable it was awesome it's not any more it's like giving the money is just digging your grave of your future but it's a slow process so we will not notice it on day one it's a slow process and you will give up your control now here's the i am a simple individual i am a very simple point is like i want choice and i want to control of the things that i pay for if i give you money you listen to me you do not decide for me it's like oh the m2 variant has a uh, you know half speed uh, ssd why because you know to save money instead of having two uh, basically a half uh, half capacity chips we have one big capacity chip big, big one bit capacity chip is a bit slower it's like how about no how about you give me the same capacity it's like no 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 uh no we decide it's like no if i pay for the damn thing i decide what gets into it so that's why fundamentally 
I do expect good things from Framework and AMD and I do hope Intel is also going to make a comeback and they are making some big claims, some big bold claims that uh, if they actually manage to pull it off, they're going to be the next comeback story. So, and I really like the world where it's like back in the days when I was like thinking about computers like 150 watt TDP. Like here's the my modern processor has less TDP than my old uh, bulldozer. Bulldozer had like almost 150, like 100 was continuous. So it's much more better like we are moving towards that world where we have very energy efficiency, very awesome things. And I really hope nobody buys Apple. It's like, just let it go. Because if you buy it, you are selling your future self and you're gonna pay this. Like everybody's like, oh, you should back up until it happens to them. The moment it happens to them, they are like, ah. So this was a presentation of Apple efficiency. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press this like, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.